hello, hello. If I haven't seen you yet, welcome back and welcome to our first lesson after break. Um, it is a continuation of what we have been doing. Um, so as a quick reminder, we have done a whole bunch of systems of equations. Um, let's go back and show you some of these. So again, as a reminder, we did graphing um, systems before break where we had to graph the two lines and then find where they crossed to get our solution. Um, and then we had also talked about um, numbers of solutions. So stating, you know, if they had different slopes, that meant one solution. If our equations were the same, infinite solutions. All right, I'm going to hop into my PowerPoint. Uh, you can just stick in your OneNote and this video um, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through a quick review. So today's lesson is all about substitution um, and practicing substitution with systems of equations. But before we do that, let's revisit what it means to substitute. So substitution means to plug a number in for a variable. We take something and we replace it with something else. That's what it means to substitute. Okay, you take something and you replace it with something else. So you can think about it in a way of like a substitute teacher, right? That keyword of substitute, um, that teacher replaces me, right? We have me in our classroom. If I get sick, I need a substitute. The only thing that changes is that this teacher swaps out and replaces me, okay? So the same thing happens with equations, okay? A number, in this case two, swaps out with our x. So we have 3x plus 4, it gets substituted, and then just like this teacher replaced me, the 2 replaces the x. That's the only difference. So um, really quick, let me just model a few of these on the easier side of the spectrum. So if y equals 3, substitute it into the following equations. So if y equals 3, that means 3 is going to swap out with my y there. So I'm going to write 3 equals 2 plus 3x. They just replace each other. So the y goes out, 3 goes in. Same thing happens here. 3x plus 2y equals 8. So y equals 3. I'm going to swap out my y for the 3. So I'm going to write 3x plus 2. Our y is 3 equals 8. Now there is one key thing about this one, and that is that the 2 and the y are right next to each other. I want us to remember that that means they're being multiplied. Here it looks like the number 23. That's because I didn't indicate that these two things are being multiplied together. So when you have the 2 in your variable touching, if you are going to substitute it, let's put parentheses around the thing we're plugging in so we know they're being multiplied. So then similarly, I'll do the same thing here. Substitute y equals 3 into this. So that 3 is going to come in and replace the y again. And then again, I have a number. They're touching. That means multiplication. So I'm going to put parentheses around my 3. There we go. So all we did is we plugged the 3 in wherever we saw a y value. Now, in some cases, our variable can equal a whole expression. Like I could say y equals this whole thing here, 2x plus 3, instead of just one number like we did up here, right? We had y equals 7. It was just y equals one thing. But sometimes we could say y equals this, this expression, this set of things. So all you do is the same thing. But instead of just replacing it with one number, you replace it with that whole thing. So 3x plus 4y equals 8. Again, I want to replace my y with what it equals. y is the same thing as 2x plus 4, so I'm going to swap them out. So my y is going to go out, 2x plus 4 is going to go in. So I'm going to write 3x plus 4. Remember from last time when we have a number in front of it, that means it's multiplying. So we need to put this in parentheses to show that it's being multiplied. 
and then that equals 8. So again, the y went out, and then we just plug this whole thing in. We can do the same thing again. y equals 2x plus 3. So again, y equals this whole thing. So I'm going to swap y out, but I'm going to plug this whole thing in. So I'm going to say there's no number in front of it, so there's nothing being multiplied. So I can just write 2x plus 4, what y equals, and then 2 plus 3x. And then the very last one. All right, so again, I'm going to take this, replace it where the y is. So that goes in, the y goes out. Again, y is right next to that 6, so we're going to put parentheses around it to show it's being multiplied. I'm going to write it underneath here. So we start with 6, parentheses 2x plus 4, equals, and then 4x minus 1. That 4 was really bad in the middle. That's a little bit better. Okay, so again, same idea, just this time I'm showing how we can take, like, a bigger thing. You just want to think of it as a set, it comes together, that whole thing comes in, the y goes out. Okay, dun, dun, dun. moving on. So now that we've reviewed substitution and like what it means, sorry you didn't get much practice with it. If you want more practice, let me know and I can do some of these with you um, if those were confusing. But now that we have like reviewed what this idea of substitution is, taking something and replacing it with something else, we're going to apply that to our system of equations. So again, before break, we talked about how um, we can solve a system by graphing. We graphed our two lines, found where they crossed. Now sometimes you're going to get a system that might have decimals in it. Decimals are not easy to graph, right? If you think of our graphs, they usually go like by ones or by twos, not by decimals. Sometimes you might have really large equations like 60x minus 40 or negative 40x plus 80. This system right here would be almost impossible to graph, especially if I gave you something that a graph that looked like this, right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This one has a y-intercept of 80. How the heck am I supposed to get all the way up to 80? And then my slope is 40, so negative 40. So that means we'd have to go down 40 boxes, which that's just unrealistic. So graphing with huge numbers is not easy to do on a graph, especially a small graph. Um, so there's actually other ways we can solve a system of equations. We don't, graphing isn't the only way. We can also use substitution. That's like our key word for today. So we can use substitution to solve a system of equations when issues like this occur, when we have something too big or decimals or you want to use substitution when you aren't given a graph. If you aren't given a graph, you've got to solve it some way. Or you might just be asked to solve it using substitution specifically. Like I might tell you, here's a problem. You need to solve it this way. Show your work. So when we're solving a system for substitutions um, or using substitution, there's a couple different steps. So the first step is to substitute then solve for a variable, then plugging it in, and then writing it as an ordered pair. So today we're just focusing on this substitution part. We've spent, you know, the first few minutes here reviewing what it means. Now we're just going to focus on substitution with systems. So here is where we're going to focus in OneNote. So here is your part to write things down. Let me open it up. All right, so again, now you're going to be following along, writing things down with me. So it is your turn. All right, so when we have a system, again, if I say solve using substitution, well, I need to know how to substitute. So that's all we're going to do. So I'm going to substitute this equation into this one. 
just like how I showed you in the um, in, in in my PowerPoint, how we could take that whole like two x plus four and swap it out for y, we can do the same thing here. We have three x plus one, and that whole thing equals y. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it in for y. So I'm going to have three x plus one equals 5x minus 3. I'm just using different colors so you can see it a little bit better hopefully. So we just took this top equation here and plugged it into the bottom one. y equals this, so because y and that are the same thing, we're going to swap it out. Okay, again, same thing here. Oh, now we have x, that is fine. Okay, and instead of replacing y, all that means is I know what x equals, so I'm going to replace x. So we have x equals 6y minus 11. x and that are the same thing, so I'm going to swap it out for x in the equation below. So doo -doo -doo, 6y minus 11 is going to go in. That x is going to go out. So what you end up getting is negative 2. And then again, they're touching. That means multiplication. So I'm going to put some parentheses around it. That whole thing, 6y minus 11. So we just did negative 2x. Now we have minus 3y equals negative 7. Done. Again, I just want us to try the substitution. I want us to get comfortable taking one equation, plugging it into the other. All right, there's two problems below. I want you to go ahead and pause me and try it. This one is exactly the same as the one above it, just different numbers. This one, instead of giving you what x equals, I give you what y equals. So again, you'll take that, plug it in for y. Don't forget parentheses around it. Come back when you're done when you want to check your answers. Try it. Do not come back with this not tried. Pause me now, please. All right. So hopefully you did what I asked and gave this a whirl. So again, now we have this y equals this. So I'm going to take that x plus 3, and I'm going to swap it in for y. y equals that. So it's going to replace y. And we're going to write x plus 3. And then we have equals 2x plus 4. Again, I'm just doing the different colors so you can clearly see where we plugged it in. And then the next one, y is 6x minus 1. So that's going to replace my y. And then we end up with 3x plus 2 and then again, 2 times y. So it's 2 times this whole thing. So we're going to write that in parentheses. 6x minus 1. And then that whole thing equals 43. And that is all we're doing today. Substituting, plugging it in. Not trying to solve anything. We are simply just plugging things in. Now, before I had... Um, let you go into your independent practice, which the first one I've given you a hint on. The reason we're doing this, the reason we have to substitute is because we cannot solve an equation when there's two different variables. When we have y equals 6x minus 1, there is no idea, we have no idea what x could be or what y could be because there's multiple numbers here that could work, multiple pairs. So we cannot solve it unless there is only one specific variable. So by substituting, by plugging this equation into this one, you can see that we only have x's now. So now we could solve for that x variable. So again, that's the reason we do substitution. So we only have one variable to work with and to find. All right, take this time now to work on your independent practice. Uh, again, practice your substituting. Let me know when you finish, and I will send you the mastery check. 
Have a great day.